disease of some kind, some just general grimness, I would say, rule A, don't bite hobos. Mm. Rule, rule two, just don't bite people. Yeah. <laughs> Seems a good rule of thumb. that's, um, the first rule on the first page of the handbook. Just don't bite tramps. Yeah. Which, it's which, only gonna end badly. which handbook? Just the handbook of oh, life. The handbook, the yeah. life handbook. Don't buy hobos. Don't buy hobos. <laughs> no, actually, that would be great. Well, at not least not in bulk. <laughs> <laughs> don't buy a hobo in bulk. Do you know what I've often thought? It'd be great to just maybe, I don't know what the rules are, but maybe just to, to sort of buy a hobo just as a slave. <laughs> Because it sometimes seems to me, people often say, what would you like for Christmas? And I think to myself, a slave would yeah. be good. I know it's not PC. <laughs> you know, I know it's not trendy anymore in your Guardian reading, lentil-eating world. Is that to a say that a slave would be handy. Would you ever like to ride the rails with a hobo? <laughs> I would love to <laughs> ride the, the rails. Maybe the hobo. With a know. hobo, a sort of Man Friday yeah. figure. Yeah. Well, I, I think this is what's happened since I've moved out. You know, you yeah. need... <laughs> You need Someone a companion to, make me tea. to lord over, yeah. and uh, perhaps, yeah, bite. For, for a slave, though, uh, Steve, is they're notoriously inefficient. <laughs> That's true. Unless you can get yourself a Polish, uh, a tramp. <laughs> a Polish tramp. That's probably the best you're gonna get. Well, of course, the problem is with the hobo is the reason they probably can't hold down a decent job mm. is because of some kind of psychological problem, so you don't really want them in your house yeah. doing your work, I suppose. We should have thought this through. Should have thought it through, um, mm. but, uh, yeah, I don't know if you, if that's, as I say, it's not fashionable anymore, but, uh... Yeah, What's maybe I got one for Christmas. Who knows? Hobos as slaves? Was that, was that a fashion? No, I meant slavery. Is this something that's happened in the year I've been away in America? Slavery was very fashionable. Fashion. Very fa slavery was very fashionable in the sort of 1800s. Ah, right. Uh, it was very, very popular for quite a while. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, who knows? Maybe we can bring it back in a more uh, humane way. Well, I'm making a film about it. In, are you? In the new year. I'm a werewolf slave. Oh, of course. And the vampires right. are our masters. Come back. Tell us how you got on. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, all of which, um, <laughs> depraved, uh, thoughts leads us to Tiny Dan's Musical Choice of the Year. Yes, yes indeed. Uh, this, this was the year, Steve, that I developed a, a pathological love of new music. And, uh, I would, I would push my own grandmother out of the way to get to some new music. If it yeah. was, if she was between me and the new, <laughs> yeah. she's gone. Sure. Um, but, uh, my favourite song of the year, uh, was actually by an act that I've uh, I've been aware of for several years, Four Hero. They released yeah. an album uh, back in the spring, and this child, uh, this track is spring, encapsulated in a record. It's got a huge swooping uh, string motif, and it's lovely. And it's called Morning Child. That's uh, Tiny Dan's musical choice of the year. Uh, remind us again what it was. Uh, it was Morning Child by Four Hero. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we're almost at the end of the show, and uh, therefore it's uh, getting ever closer to New Year, and uh, I'm sure you'll have a wild old time. Good luck to everyone. Um, Harry, what was your uh, your highlight, cultural or otherwise, of the year? Yeah, well, it was a tough year for bankers. Obviously, credit crunch, Northern yeah. Rock, all that stuff. It's been uh, quite quite frenetic. Um, but I think my personal highlight was obviously uh, Dan's and Sammy's personal low light, their personal hell. The fact that me and Ruth got to go to Glastonbury on, course. The, on the Steve Show outing. It was a very, very wet and uh, and sort of miserable uh, Glastonbury, but you still enjoyed yourself. I enjoyed myself. Uh, and just having Billy Bragg uh, in the room playing in front of us, for me and Ruth, I know, was just an absolute massive joy. So, uh, yeah, that was wonderful. Good. Well, um, hopefully uh, next year, maybe... Um, is it on again next year? When does it I happen? think it is, yeah, yeah, because they're saying Radiohead. Well, obviously, you two have had your chance. I guess we'll have to invite the other two um, next year. Oh, let's Can see. I say that Rufus very kindly sent me a CD of that episode of the show, which yeah. I listened to to in New York. Oh, yeah. Excellent. That's very sweet. It was, it was a mediocre <laughs> show, so it's a shame he said that one. There have been, there have been better ones. But uh, life's cruel. And we obviously uh, thank Michael as well for coming in, uh, and I appreciate special. that very much. You'll uh, have an exciting uh, forthcoming year, I imagine. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with all the movies. Thank you. Um, before we come to your uh, final musical choice, which we'll uh, use up to wrap up the show, I just obviously have to thank everyone else. Uh, Rufus, you've enjoyed yourself this year? I've had a wonderful year, Steve. My Sundays have been um, a real highlight. And, uh, you know, Facebook, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe the way we judge the year, how it's gone, you know, <laughs> yes. it's got the most fans and so on, but... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many at the moment? 345. Ooh! Yeah. Feel the burn, lads. Mm -hmm. And lady. And, uh, Sammy as well, well, thank you so much as well for being involved. More than welcome. For it's much been of the year. a pleasure and a joy. I should just point out to regular Steve Show fans that we're probably going to take January off and resume proceedings, um, in an all-new Steve Show, uh, in <laughs> February. It's the same as the old one, but we call it the all-new one in a sort of rebranded way, just to try and attract some new listeners. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thank you very much to everyone who's pressed buttons. Uh, Ben, thank you to Charlotte, and obviously to Jude, who's uh, sadly sick and not able to attend this pre-record. And as I say, we'll uh, have a final choice from Michael Sheen, who's been very kind to come in here on this day before 
New Year. Um, Merry New Year. <laughs> and, um, and what's your final musical choice, sir? My final musical choice is from Richard Hawley's New York. How would Kenneth Williams introduce it? <laughs> <laughs> I would choose Richard Hawley from the album Ladies Bridge. It's tonight the strings are out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll hear that. Well, thank you very much. A round of applause for everyone and everyone's contribution there. We'll see you February tonight. Got feelings in your heart. Don't let fear of me. I thought I'd lay my cards on the table uh, right off uh, the bat because we have been away for, what, four weeks now and mm -hmm. I realise a lot of people may not be familiar with our modus operandi. That tune very much uh, won, I think, when, Harry, when did we enjoy that? Uh, 1990 it was released. Something like that, yeah. So where would we have been in our uh, careers, lives? Uh, would have been 15, what, doing our GCSEs? Oh, heady days. Oh, great days. You, of course, went to school with me, close personal pal, mm -hmm. for all these years. I've kept you close. Yeah. You know, I could have changed, I could have turned my back on you. I tried for a while. You did for a while, it didn't yeah, really come back, <laughs> didn't you, <laughs> by moving to London and um, I've taken you under my wing. I have mm. realised I've slowly turned my back on a lot of uh, a lot of people. Well, a lot of them weren't really worth it, were they? A lot of uh, awful, awful people. <laughs> Just a lot awful. of them, a surprising number of smackheads at our school as well. Yeah. Didn't realise yeah. until later. Well, it's very addictive. <laughs> <laughs> it is very addictive. But uh, yeah, so well, I, I welcome uh, Harry here, who's um, been with me for many years and uh, yeah, I thought I'd, uh, I'd throw in um, the Soup Dragons. He's very much the sort of tune we'd have maybe enjoyed. Um, well, I don't know where we, we'd never down, really... Down the roller disco, <laughs> the ice cream <laughs> social. Yeah, maybe just hanging outside Mel's Diner on Hollywood Boulevard <laughs> um, with the fonts. Um, but yes, no, it was very much a song about childhood, and so mm. it seemed only appropriate that um, we would it was somehow, I think, maybe kind of plug us into a certain uh, age of the listenership. Yeah. Marks us out and uh, tells you where we're coming from. And uh, so, yes, we've got us, what we know, 30 something, mm. uh, to cater for the younger listener. It's the lovely Sammy. She's coming out oh. from the North. Little Hello. For her. Uh, and uh, you, I guess, never even heard that song before. Um, only because you've played it on the show once before, or, or I've heard it. I don't believe I have, Sammy. I've really got an encyclopedic memory for the songs on the show. I don't think we've actually repeated ourselves. Uh, in that often. case, I actually know it from somewhere else, and that disturbs me. Because in 1990, I was four. Four years oh, old. Doesn't yeah. that sicken you, Harry? It's frustrating. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and so, uh, the song means little to you. It's got no history to you, no heritage. It's got no history or heritage, but it's a damn fine song. It is, isn't it? Thanks yeah. very much. A cover, of course, of the Rolling Stones. Of course. Um, that makes more sense now. Right, yes. okay. Yes. Uh, although I don't believe they have the, uh, the sort of rag a rap plastic, maybe, um, Keith Moon, was he in the Rolling Stones? No. <laughs> 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 yeah, he was. No, he it? knew them. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking of. But it's that, if you can't, if you I want musical information oh and know-how, the I'm message gonna be boards trouble are going to be alive, gonna be in trouble they? here. Oh. He was in The Who. Yeah. Yeah. But they are very similar. I wonder what he's doing now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but anyway, no. Listen, listen. Um, uh, firstly, quick. We just got a quick um, uh, assessment of how your Christmas and New Year was. Uh, do, do we still say Happy New Year? How does it work? What are the rules? It's a bit late, isn't it? Really? Is it uh, by the time we get to February, we've abandoned it? It's all over. Yeah. Okay. But has it been so far? Two thousand eight been good? Uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been stressful. Um, I spent it with uh, two very demanding mistresses. Obviously, the financial crisis. Yeah. Uh, I work in a bank. Uh, and uh, finding new music. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Music. Uh, we should just, uh, by the way, thank you. Thank, uh, send a big thanks and a big shout out to uh, both Alan Carr and Martin mm. Freeman who've yes, been fitting in absolutely. while we've been uh, away. Good shows. Did you hear them? Uh, I didn't hear any of Martin. He was playing a load of crazy old uh, uh, northern, ro northern, northern rock. Northern rock. <laughs> <I can't laughs> banging on the brakes. Banging on the mic. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. He was playing all that northern soul stuff, wasn't he? Which uh, I generally love. I heard a bit of Alan Carr as well. He sounded like a hoot. Right. <laughs> well, that's very much how you would uh, summarise Alan. I think a hoot. Very much a hoot and a wag. Um, but uh, yeah. So thanks to them. And uh, if you are a new listener then um, uh, we will try and explain ourselves to you over the course of the show. If you're just joining us again, uh, then I have got some plans to revamp the programme for 2008, which I will explain to you shortly. Uh, very quickly, Sammy, though, how's your new year uh, been so far? Um, January thus far has been a bit of a letdown. Uh -huh. uh, it's been a lot of tragedy. I'll not go into it. There's no need. So I'm hoping that January's got it all over and done with, and uh, the rest of the year is just going to be amazing. And I did get a stylophone for Christmas, so that's kind of perked up 
the sure. misery. Uh, if the show uh, falls into a lull at any point, you'll whip that out? Um, maybe next week. Okay, great. Um, and also, I should just point out that despite the fact I've been away for four weeks, I have not listened to any new music. <laughs> I've taken a break from new music, so aside from my not knowing who Keith Moon used to play for, I also have not been seeking out new music. <laughs> the message boards for the six music listeners will be ablaze. Hey, Let's hey. hear some new music, though, and I'll come out and tell you how I'm going to revamp the show. album Circular Sounds released on Wednesday that's uh, Kelly Stoltz and a previous single Your Reverie so we uh, are of course seeking out new music always and we'll explore some more new music later plus of course that's not only the raison d'etre of the show we should just explain to new listeners uh, that we also play tunes from uh, our varied collections that's actually why I've got my cronies here they'll be uh, recommending mm -hmm. tunes later you the listeners as well can also get in touch and recommend tunes to us so of course it's all about the music and that's very much uh, the key to the show but it struck me and uh, something that I've realized um, sort of post Christmas um, I was trying to listen to the Today, Today programme, the news programme, yeah. in an effort to seem more, just more knowledgeable about the world. You know, I've turned my back on Radio 1 now. Uh, I don't <laughs> listen to that in the mornings anymore. I haven't listened actually since, I believe, Simon Mayo left, yeah. so that's quite some time ago. <clears throat> Not that Chris Moyles, I'm sure, doesn't keep me fully abreast of uh, the very latest goings on in uh, Kenya. Yeah. But, uh, news beat. <laughs> exactly. Because uh, I find I can't actually listen to news unless it has a pounding house track. <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I just can't concentrate. Um, <clears throat> Pardon me. So anyway, yes, I was trying to pay attention to something important about something, you know, probably the probably the house crisis, something like that. Yeah. And I was trying to think, I listened to this, uh, John Humphreys um, talking very eloquently about it, but I couldn't stop thinking about Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. Which, Why? <laughs> which is a, a poster I keep seeing near where I live for a film, a, sh a film that <laughs> came out early, I think it was early in the year, or maybe just before Christmas, starring Dustin Hoffman yeah. and Natalie Portman called Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium, right? This is a great name for a film. It's a great name for a film, and um, and so I'm listening to Humphreys, but then into my head pops Dustin Hoffman and the words Mr. Megorium Wonder Emporium, <laughs> which is really nice to say. It's a lovely thing to say, Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. And, um, and I've not seen the film. I from what I understand, uh, Dustin plays a 243-year-old shopkeeper, um, um, very Willy Wonka esque, yeah. And uh, he's got a magical shop, and uh, he leaves it to uh, Natalie Portman, and you know, hilarity ensues. And it's not done very well, and I don't think anyone I know has actually seen it. Have you seen Mr. McGorham's Wonder Boy? No. I haven't, no. Sam, it seems like the kind of film that not only you would go and see, but actually somehow would relate to you in your life. <laughs> if anyone's ever been inside a magical candy shop, it would have been you. Um, I've never been inside a magical candy shop. I did recently fall into a shelving unit of crisps. I don't know if that's anything similar. Can we save that for later? It sounds like a heck of a story, but I don't want to lose my train of thought. Um, just make a note, Harry, if you would, of um, yeah, crisps. Sammy Crisps box head. <laughs> yes, brilliant. So down. anyway, so um, but you've not seen Mr. McGorham's Wonder Emporium. I haven't, Emporium. no. The name has always tickled me, but yes. it did seem like a pile. I like the way it's called uh, Wonder Emporium, and you said it, he's got some sort of magical shop. <laughs> he's got a Wonder Emporium. Emporium. Yeah. But this is what was frustrating me as I was lying there thinking, I know you shouldn't criticise these things um, because they're obviously aimed at kids, uh -huh. but it just frustrated me that his name was Mr. Megorium. <laughs> <laughs> because it just seems too convenient that yeah. you would run an Emporium if your name's yeah. Megorium. I've never heard the name Megorium before. I've never heard of a Frank Megorium or a Trevor Megorium. Yeah. So it sounds to me suspiciously like, and I don't want to accuse anyone of anything here, that the writers maybe came up with the name Megorium knowing full well that it rhymes with Emporium, thus the rather neat Megorium Emporium rhyme. Yeah, so you're saying it could have been called Mr. Flop's Magical Shop. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But that would make perhaps more sense because you very rarely use the word Emporium either in, you know, I mean, it's, a, it's an obscure word. It's a word yeah. people don't generally use. It just, and it, anyway, so I'm lying there trying to listen to Humphreys and I'm just getting annoyed. Because <laughs> this is so absurd. <laughs> just getting annoyed at the fact that he's called Mr. Megorium and just thinking it seems lazy the you know lazy writing somehow and Humphreys wasn't addressing this <laughs> this is no. not something that Humphreys even mentioned and I listened for a good Insane. a good four minutes you know I was really trying to focus yeah. and I did not hear Megorium mentioned once <laughs> no one was discussing uh, Hoffman or any of Hoffman's antics at no. all anyway so anyway so this is the point so I'm getting frustrated about Megorium and his Emporium and it occurred to me that however hard I try I can't stay focused on important things on significant things I realised the other day that I do not know someone asked me do you know the name of the shadow uh, shadow health secretary no idea got no idea name can you name him uh, no no Sammy not a clue no uh, can you no 